Hi everybody, it is Gina's baking time. So today I went into the Borg cookbook, page 67, Josie Johnson, her pumpkin cake roll. And so what I have done so far is I did go ahead and make one ahead of time. And I made sure to roll it up while it was hot. So it'll be nice and I'll undo it when I'm ready to put the frosting on it. So to get start with the, the pumpkin cake itself, it calls for three eggs. So let's go ahead and do three eggs. So with the three eggs, it does say to beat the eggs for five minutes. And so I'm gonna start it off baking and then I'll tell you what else is in the recipe. Beating, I mean. And then we'll go, go on. So we have three eggs and we're gonna beat those with a mixer on high for five minutes. So I'm only gonna beat it a little bit Let's tell you what the rest of it is. So to the eggs, so to the eggs, once they are beaten, I will add one cup of granulated sugar. And you want to do that gradually. And then we're going to stir in two-thirds of a can of pumpkin puree. This just says puree, 100% pure pumpkin and beat all that together and a teaspoon of lemon juice into the eggs and then onto the side i have three quarters of a cup of flour which i'm going to add ginger nutmeg cinnamon baking powder and not baking soda and mix and fold that into the pumpkin mixture and then in this bowl, I have about a cup and a half of powdered sugar, and I have a little bit of milk, and some warmed Philadelphia cream cheese, and some warm butter, which to make the inside. So let's go ahead and get these eggs whipped for the next, in the next five minutes, and I'll be back. This is on high, but I do wanna show you what the eggs are doing. They're getting more frothy and they are getting thicker. Okay, well, oh my goodness, look at that. They're getting kind of thick. So now it's been five minutes, so let's go ahead and gradually mix in the sugar. Probably a third of a cup at a time. We can add it in. And what I noticed is that it does get goes from a yellow to more of a light yellow. Oh, wow. okay, that is very exciting to me. This is the first time I've ever whipped eggs that much. And I have noticed in a lot of my recipes, I am starting to watch this lady out of Germany. And she does that all the time with hers. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the pumpkin. And what I did was I made one earlier and I used half of the can. And now I am just using the other half. Because I wanted to have one done so I could show you. And let's go ahead and put the egg. I'm gonna leave the egg shells. My friend, I have a leek growing in my garden. Well, not in my garden, but in one of my plants. And it's actually starting to do something. So, okay, let's continue. Let's get in the pumpkin. in the pumpkin and you can see that it is turning the orangish from the 
pumpkin itself. Okay, and then the next thing is to do one teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm sure you could use fresh lemon juice for this. And if you wanted to just the lemon, zest the lemon, I'm sure you could do that also. Okay. So let's go ahead and mix the lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice would probably be a little bit better. And I hope you guys can hear me. But you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Ooh, that was nice. Okay, lemon juice. Now, here is my three quarters of a cup of flour. And I'm going to take my ground cinnamon and it calls for two teaspoons of cinnamon. Let me just take this off. And instead of adding it to the bowl, I'm just going to add it to my flour. Two teaspoons of cinnamon and it calls for two, for one teaspoon of baking powder. Not baking soda, baking powder. So, and this is baking powder. And let me put the lid back on here. And we have, this here is my ground ginger. I put it in a little jar. And it calls for one teaspoon of ginger. one teaspoon of ginger and then it also calls for a half a teaspoon of nutmeg so I have my handy dandy measuring spoon here we'll go down to a half a teaspoon and if you have fresh nutmeg just eye it which I do in my freezer actually have fresh nutmeg but I didn't want to use it today and then let's just stir this flour mixture and I do already have a 15 by 10 by one inch pan. I did put Pam on the bottom. I'm putting in, and then I put some parchment paper on the bottom so that I can roll it easier and spray the pan. And I'm using Pam with butter, so with butter flavor. You can just use regular Pam, any type of cooking spray. And now let's go ahead and put the flour in here. And it does say to fold it in, but I did it with just mixing it in. But if you wanted to actually follow the directions, it does say to fold it in. With a spatula. Fold it more, and then I'll put the rest in. There's the rest. And we'll just get it very nicely mixed all together. And we'll put this right there. My mixer away. And I have my scraper here. So let's move some of this out of the way. This actually turned out better than my last one. My last one was a little bit thicker, so I don't know what I did different, but I'm sure it'll be fine, just the way it is. So, let's go ahead and I have the oven at 375. You're gonna wanna do it at 375 for 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and, and it doesn't, to me, it didn't look like it was going to be enough, but once you spread it out, it, it is enough. Because you just want like an inch, because you're going to add all that powdered sugar and cream cheese to the inside, so that it looks like a roll. You know those Christmas logs that you used to do at Christmas? Maybe I never did one. But like this year, I have never tried before. Thank you, Marcy Ekra. For letting me use your sheet pans here <coughs> so I'm just gonna spread it to the middle spread it to the edges because I kind of put it in the middle make sure there are no bare spots in the pan due to all the corners and what this parchment paper is going to do 
when it is baked, it'll be easier to roll. So I'm using parchment paper. Some people probably would take it out, put it on a towel and roll it up, but I'm just gonna use the parchment paper. Yeah, it doesn't get some of it, but that's okay. Okay, here you go. Here is the roll ready for the oven. I have my oven at 375 and let's put this in there for 15 minutes. And I set my microwave timer. Next thing, what I'm gonna do is I am going to move this over and wash these off so I can make the Philadelphia cream cheese, the frost, the inside, since I already have one out. So I'm gonna wash these up real good. And so I already have the powdered sugar here. Let's get this onion out of the way. You don't need to see an onion. And so again, the insides are for the filling. We're going to combine one cup of powdered sugar. It says two three ounce packets of sorry, two three ounce packets of Philadelphia cream cheese, but I have an eight ounce packet. That's why I put a little bit more powdered sugar in here. And it calls for four tablespoons of butter. And with this here, I'm just gonna cut out. That's a good thing about these little, it's about half of half of a stick. But you definitely want to make sure that it is warm. Otherwise it will not mix correctly. And then it calls for a half a teaspoon of vanilla. This one does not call for milk. So I can just put the milk back in the cupboard. And let's see if I can get this vanilla open. There we go. And we'll put a half a teaspoon. So obviously if you have a teaspoon, you just want to put a half in. But I didn't, so I used the lid. Okay, let's see here how this turns out. And you don't want to start it off really fast because otherwise the powdered sugar will go all over. So this is basically just a cream cheese frosting. Oh, yum, yum, yum. All right, let's put this over to the side. And I'm gonna clear off my table here so I can put the cake, unroll the cake and put it on here. Okay, let's see here. This is my first time doing this. So let's just start putting it in. It has cracked a little bit. And I think what I need to do next time with this other one is not do it as, maybe let it cool all the way before I roll it. Oh, but this is gonna be so amazing. It'll taste good. And just, let's just go ahead and put the inside, mm, all the way to the edge, because you wanna do all the way to the edge, in my opinion, you do it all the way to the edge here so it will come together the way you want it to come together. And you won't have to put toothpicks or anything in it. So let's get the rest of this. And it did, it did crack, but this is my first time. What are you going to do? All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can take this off. 
and roll it up. I know it's cracking. I am so sorry. I'm sure somebody in the comments on Facebook can tell me how to get it so it won't crack. Yeah, I'll taste it. Oh my goodness. I love cream cheese. And thank goodness it's only me and Harvey gonna eat this, so let me wash my hands. And what I am gonna do is I am going to cut into this bad boy. And then I'm also going to put it in the freezer. Yeah, see? I just wanna see if it did what I wanted it to do in the middle here. So let's see. Oh my goodness, look at that! It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Gave me the swirls, and it's amazing. And I, it did it even, yeah, it's cracked a little bit, but you know what, the flavor is going to be amazing. And here is the other side. So I wanted some defined swirls. And I definitely got some defined swirls. I will put it in the freezer for a little bit. And I thank you so much for joining me for pumpkin cake rolls. So everybody have a wonderful and excellent day and I will talk to you soon. All right, and thank you for joining me for Gina's Baking Time.